Hey there, welcome back to another video this time around. It is my review of the 2024 blockbuster kaiju film Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. Now, I gotta be honest here, folks. Going into this, I had very low expectations. I did not have Titan sized expectations for this one because I felt the previous film. Godzilla vs. Kong was just okay and was a time waster for me. Like, it was one of those movies where it was worth a watch for the spectacle and for some of the action, but it had a lot of other problems. And it was just one of those movies where, at the end of the day, I, I liked it okay, but I wasn't really super enamored with it. So. This is one of those movies where the trailers made it look kind of dumb and a little bit too silly, a little bit too over the top, and I just wasn't feeling it. But then one night, I had time to kill after work, so I decided to go and see the film in IMAX. And I'm really glad that I did, because I had a blast with this movie. Now... I'm not going to sit here and say that this film doesn't have any flaws. It does. It has some plot holes. It has some other issues when it comes to its script. But I had a hell of a good time with it. Like, I thought this was a really entertaining, fun, big budget, blockbuster, monster basher. Uh, <laughs> this was, in a lot of ways kind of like a main event for a wrestling pay-per-view but this time around it's with Godzilla and Kong uh versus uh the Scar King with a uh, special guest referee Shimu <laughs> you know like it was it was that's the kind of uh crazy uh wild uh entertainment uh, value that I got out of this movie now, I know for a fair amount of people, they didn't feel the same way. I know there's some people who think that this was just lame and it was boring and it was just too dumb for its own good and didn't have that many redeeming values. And those opinions are valid and I, I respect them, but... I really enjoyed this movie, despite the fact that, yeah, the human characters are kind of lame and not that well written. And there are some other aspects of the plot and the script that if you think about it for longer than five seconds, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But it's one of those movies where there are certain moments in the film that are just so insane wild and crazy that to me it it, it kind of makes up for it also it's just a fun movie like it has a good pace to it and there's a lot of other elements that i i felt were actually legitimately well done when it comes to this film it's directed by adam wingard and i think he did a really good job with this i thought he did an amazing job directing it at least to me personally. Uh, <clears throat> I know there's some people that will disagree uh, completely when it comes to Adam Wingard and his place in this franchise and the MonsterVerse. But I think he's right at home here. And I really want to see what he's got uh, up his sleeve and what he's got in mind next. Because this is just a really fun film, even from a visual perspective. Like, you can tell that Adam Wingard has a lot of passion and love for kaiju films and, and for this franchise and for Godzilla and Kong. And that really does show when it comes to uh, the, the various different sequences involving those two characters in this film. And... I just think it's a really well shot film in a multitude of different ways in terms of just showcasing the uh, 
larger than life uh, visuals, uh, the kaiju battles, even some of the scenes in the Hollow Earth, uh, the stuff with the the psychic tribe, uh, even some of the sequences near the end when it comes to the battle uh, with King Kong and Godzilla versus uh, Scar King and Shimu in this in the city. I think it was Rio. I think it was Rio de, uh, de Janeiro. And I just think it's a well-directed film, well shot. The, the, the scenes that involve Godzilla and Kong fighting each other, like the sequence uh, that takes place uh, in uh, Egypt, right where the pyramids are. Uh, I thought that was shot with a lot of spectacle and with a lot of genuine size and scope to it. And it's one of those films where the direction isn't going to win any awards, but when it comes to really putting you inside the action, when it comes to showcasing the sheer size and magnitude of these Titans duking it out or the various other uh, battles that Godzilla or Kong uh, get into throughout the film, or even some of the stuff involving the human characters and their uh, craft and th them trying to survive the chaos. It's just a, a movie that doesn't let up visually. Like it's very stimulating. It's, it's very consistently stimulating when it comes to its visuals and the camera isn't stagnant. It's not slow. It's not just staying in one place. And I just like the energy of it. And I, I, I just think it's a well-directed film overall for the kind of movie that it is. The screenplay by Terry Russio, Simon Barrett and Jeremy Slater. This is where the film falters a little bit. I appreciate that there is more of a focus on the monsters this time than some of the other films in this series. And I think the human stuff, it's not great, but I personally found it to be a little bit more tolerable than some of the other human subplots in uh, the, the previous MonsterVerse movies. I actually liked it. Uh, Trapper. I liked his character, who in a lot of ways is very heavily inspired by the G.I. Joe cartoon. So he's like a, a G.I. Joe from G.I. Joe and or some guy from an 80s uh, um, action show. Definitely had a lot of those vibes with that character. Bernie, the podcaster guy. It, honestly, it was just more, one of those take it or leave it kind of things. I didn't find the writing of the character to be that obnoxious and annoying, but that's just me personally. I kind of felt the same way about Dr. Eileen Andrews and her uh, daughter, Gia, the deaf girl. The whole uh, relationship between the two was sweet, and but there was a lot of cliches with that, with the whole like, oh... I don't know how to communicate with her and she's distant and she's feeling like she's out of place in this world. And she goes in meets uh, more of her own kind in the hollow earth. And there's this drama about whether or not she's going to stay there. And you know that that's not going to happen. So it just feels drawn out and just unnecessary when it comes to the drama and just forced when it comes to a lot of the emotion that's behind uh, those scenes. But the monsters are the highlight here. And I see the criticisms when it comes to Godzilla and him not being in the film a lot and Godzilla basically only having an extended cameo. But for me personally, I felt the approach worked. Because Adam has explained this. Adam has said that Godzilla is hard to get close to. And Kong is more human in a multitude of different ways. 
So the, Kong is a character you can really connect with more on a deeper level versus Godzilla. And so that's why I don't mind Godzilla being, in essence, this... Uh, um, this underlying force throughout uh, uh, the the story, because I feel like Godzilla, it's not like he's completely worthless or useless and his presence in the film is nothing but fan service to me. Like I, I, I feel that his presence is still very valid and very necessary. And I think the approach of having it be short, but to the point I think works because the whole thing with Godzilla is that he's battling all these other monsters throughout the film to charge up so he can be prepared for another battle with the Scar King. Because the previous time Godzilla fought the Scar King, he got really messed up. So Godzilla is just fighting these other monsters to to really uh to really provide him an, an upper hand in another uh, battle with Scar King, or at least enable him to be on the same level. So, in essence, Godzilla is leveling up throughout uh, the film, which I didn't mind. I know some people, they don't like the stuff with him sleeping in the Coliseum and him being like a cat. I thought that was charming. I liked that. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool that you would have scenes with Godzilla being cute, curling up in the Coliseum, but then him being a total badass and suplexing Kong in front of the pyramids, you know, it, it, it was one of those things where, okay, you can make Godzilla cute and badass at the same time. All right. And with Kong, I really liked the focus on his character and I really liked his arc and how he grew throughout the film. I liked what happened with him and in, in Suko, the, the, the mini Kong and the antagonistic, uh, connection and relationship that the two had with one another. I, I liked the scenes where Kong goes to, uh, the, the scar King's kingdom and just wreck shit. I, I, I like how Kong, in a lot of ways, he just becomes even more uh, uh, of a titan than he was before. You know, he's got the, 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 the bionic arm. You know, he's got all this other stuff. And he's still got that axe from the previous movie, but then he's got all these other things. And... I like that Kong evolves as a character and just becomes someone that you genuinely root for. And I think this is like the best version of Kong that I've seen in any film because of the, the depth that this Kong is provided by the writers. And some of the craziest and the most unexpected and the most insane scenes in this movie have to deal with Kong like the whole scene where he uses Suko as a flail <laughs> just said <laughs> this little baby monkey and just wiping the floor with these other monkeys with another monkey that shit was bat shit crazy and I loved it and I also liked Mothra's inclusion in, in the script I felt that Mothra had a presence. I felt that Mothra, there was a reason for Mothra to be there. And I felt that it was fine. I, I didn't feel that it was just something that was tacked on, but that's just me personally. I didn't really need a, a really large major focus on Mothra. In the script, I was fine with what was going on with Mafra, uh, and I, I liked how, she, in a lot of ways, she was kind of like the 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 friend or or the or the girlfriend who's like looking at the two boys just fighting, and it's just like shaking her head, just like, come on, would you two stop fighting? <laughs> We've got work to do. 
Uh, and I, and I like this stuff with Mothra at the end where she saves the humans and gets involved in the wild, crazy finale in the whole of earth, which I thought was really creative and a lot of fun. It's a zero gravity fight with Godzilla and King Kong versus Scar King and his minions. I thought that was a really fun sequence. But even though I do like a lot of things about this film, I would have liked to have had a little bit more shots uh, with uh, Godzilla and King Kong working together versus Scar King and Shimo in, 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 in the climax, in the final fight. I, I felt the final fight wasn't completely a letdown for me but it was something where i would have liked to have seen a little bit more like kong get a few more shots in and godzilla get a few more shots in you know stuff like that um but that didn't really necessarily affect my enjoyment of the film that much because there's just so much about it that i really really liked the battle between Godzilla and Kong in front of the pyramids is like one of my favorite things that I've seen this year. That was a, a literal wrestling wrestling match. That's what that was. That was a WWE match between two uh, big superstars. I mean, complete with like pocket sand and all of this other stuff. I mean, Godzilla suplexing Kong was just pure insanity. It was incredible. Uh, and, and it was just a, a movie that, yeah, this, this script had some dumb stuff, had some plot holes, like the whole attack on the compound, and there's Scar King's uh, uh, um, imprint on the wall, and you're like, wait a second, how did that happen? How did he sneak in and do that when he was supposedly on his way to the hollow earth and i guess he was already there and it just that was a little confusing uh kong's mecha arm he does like give uh, godzilla a, a massive uppercut with it but i still would have liked to have seen him do a little bit more with it so that was a little uh um lacking also, the human stuff, while I don't think they're as much of a focus as they were in other uh, uh, films in the MonsterVerse, other than Dan Stevens' character, the, the Trapper guy, I, I really would just like to see more scenes with Kong or Godzilla. I don't want to see nothing but nonstop monster fighting. Because I think that would get old after a certain point. I, I think there's only a, a, a certain amount of monster bashing and focus on Godzilla and Kong that can really make uh, a cohesive, let alone compelling narrative. So I feel that human characters are kind of a necessary evil, but maybe have Trapper and ha and, and a team that has... Uh, varying personalities maybe not have the stuff with gia and the doctor lady and the podcast guy maybe you just focus on trapper and his team and and they're helping kong and they get uh roped up into uh this this battle with the scar king that way you can flesh out trapper's character more i probably would have liked that approach uh uh a lot more than what we did get with the script because I'm just not as big into the Gia and the doctor lady stuff. And even the stuff with the psychic tribe, like they speak telekinetically and they're, it's nice to see that Gia isn't completely alone. and isn't the only, uh, surviving member or part of her race left on this earth. But I don't know. They just didn't really feel like they had that much of a 
presence in the story and didn't really feel like they needed to really be there except just to help Gia. That's really all that they seem to do. I think the queen at one point was doing something with the crystals, but I don't know. Like it just, that whole thing definitely did feel like a waste with those characters. And there are moments with the humor where it, it gets a bit grating, especially with the podcast guy. Now I didn't find him to be completely insufferable, but there were moments where, yeah, that, that was a bit annoying. I have to admit, but honestly, other than those elements, I thought it was a pretty decent script for what it was in a lot of ways this screenplay and this story and this overall film it's a moment movie it's a film where its success in a lot of ways relies upon you being really into the big moments in the film the moments of spectacle if the moments of spectacle don't really wow you as much or they don't really stick with you as much then it's not going to be as inherently satisfying or fun of an experience because the moments kind of fell flat. So if the moments didn't really uh, uh, get you and, and get your adrenaline pumping, then yeah, I can see why some people would find this script and this overall film to be a bit lacking or dull in some ways. And I think it's definitely not a story that has nonstop monster fighting in it or monster action. I think that is really overselling things. So I definitely wouldn't go into this film with that expectation in mind because it's not that. And I will also admit one more thing about the script. The Scar King, despite all the buildup with this character it didn't really feel like Scar King was as much of a threat as he was built up to be. So I think that was something that the screenwriters could have worked on. It, it seemed like Shimu was in the crystal that he had was really the, the thing that was making him into somewhat of a match for Godzilla or Kong. And I, I just feel that maybe he should have had some more of his monkey army involved in the f finale or or oh he's got shimu but oh here's a here's a twist he's also got someone out some other monster under his control that he breaks out just in case of emergency you know it's already a wild and crazy movie in terms of its script and and uh and the overall approach to it very much a, a showa era kind of movie so why not go all out with it? It almost felt like it didn't it, it didn't fully embrace the craziness at times, which I, I really feel that it should have. Because that's really where some of the best moments are in this film. Godzilla and Kong fighting each other in a wrestling match in front of the pyramids. Kong using Suko as a weapon against other apes. The scene where the, the one ape is talking shit to Kong and then Kong just knocks his ass out. Like that kind of stuff. Now, when it comes to the cast, I mean, it's fine. But Dan Stevens, to me, as Trapper is the, is the only major standout. I, I honestly really liked his character. I liked his performance could tell he was really having a blast playing this character. He had a lot of charisma. There was a certain charm to him that I really liked. That's why I wanted to see more scenes with him instead of Rebecca Hall and her dumb Karen haircut. Why do they keep giving these women these awful looking haircuts? What are we doing? Rebecca Hall doesn't need to look like Karen from the, you know, the, the next block. Like, that's not needed. We don't need her to look like, excuse me, can I speak to the manager? 
Uh, like we we don't need that. We do not need Rebecca Hall to look like a Karen. Um, Brian Tyree Henry, I like him as an actor, but this character is just very uh, uh bland, and I'm just mostly indifferent on this character. Like I don't have any like extreme feelings again with this character negative or positive this character is just firmly in the middle it's like this character exists this performance exists uh there's not really a whole lot i can say about his performance it's not like he was particularly awful it's just it's not a character that i'm really that big into because there's not really a reason to really bond with this character or really connect with this character on a deeper level um kaylee hoddle is gia i mean what can I say about this performance? Like, she doesn't really say anything. She's, you know, deaf and she does an all right job. I wouldn't say all right. I would say she does a good job emoting despite not saying lines of dialogue. But there's only so much you can say about a performance like that because there's no dialogue. Um, Alex Ferns is Mikhail. Fala Chen is the Iwi Queen. Rachel House is Hampton. They were fine too, but definitely the stars of the show this time around were Godzilla and and, and Kong, and I I really liked that. I liked that that they took that approach this time around. They're like, yeah, no, we're not gonna make the humans the the stars. We're gonna really make the the kaiju the star stars of the show because that's what the audiences want. That's what that's what people are looking for out of the movie. They don't want to be like, oh man, I want to see the humans. I want to see the humans more like, no, a lot of, a lot of people's criticisms. I think of the previous film was we want to see less of the humans. We want to see more of the Kaiju. And, and, um, I definitely agree with that. And I, I think the writers here, they listen to, to those criticisms. And I know speaking of criticisms, I know some people have pointed out that this could have just been a Kong sequel since it's more of a Kong film anyway and why is godzilla there you know godzilla could just be there as a cameo or godzilla can not be there at all and my thought process is this the last film was a huge hit for the studio and these crossover films they just have more appeal to wider audiences especially audiences overseas especially if you're going to have godzilla in there as well so it's not going to do as well financially if it's just a kong film and i think that's the perspective and i don't necessarily agree with it because i would have been totally fine with it just being a kong film and having more scenes with kong and suko and having more stuff with scar king in terms of building the character up and having Kong be the one along with Suko and maybe Trapper and his team take out Scar King and Shimu. I, I would be okay with that. That would be fine. Uh, but at the same time, I like the fact that you have Godzilla in this and I would feel that the, the film would be missing that epicness, you know, that awesome, uh, size and scale that certain scenes in this film have with Godzilla and Kong together. And that's why, even though in theory, I'm okay with it being a Kong sequel. I like the fact that it isn't because you get those scenes with Kong and Godzilla, especially the one with them fighting in front of the pyramids. Uh, and I don't want to trade that for just a Kong sequel, but that's just me personally. And the film also has some pretty decent technical aspects. I feel it's got some nice cinematography by Ben Saracen. Uh, the editing by Josh Schaefer, I thought was pretty solid. Although at times it can be a little bit wonky, especially when it comes to some of the scenes involving so many different monsters at once and also the humans and Mothra at the same time, like some of the stuff near the end, I, it, it, it got a bit, uh, uh messy visually. Um, the score by Tom Holkenborg and Antonio D'Lorio. I thought it was fine. 
it's very synth heavy it's very uh um non-instrumental in terms of like a, a lot of instruments that are being utilized so it doesn't really have that same epic size and scope or feel to it, it as the score for king of the monsters did for instance but i feel it works for the kind of film that godzilla x kong is trying to be but yeah it's not a score that i would say is particularly memorable or momentous I would say the song choices they used for the film were better, you know, like Twilight Zone by Golden Earring, for instance, which I thought was a lot of fun to hear that. And I thought it was a good song choice for that, for the scene that it was in. And I feel that it's pretty fast paced. Uh, it's 115 minutes, but I didn't feel like it was that much of a slog. I felt it went by at a pretty good pace. There was a, decent balance between the monsters uh being involved whether it was kong or godzilla uh versus the humans i didn't really feel that it was too human centric at times i felt there was a better balance of monsters and humans here that re de and that definitely did help the pacing and i also felt there was a good balance of action uh versus uh, establishing the plot or, or dealing with the humans or dealing with other non-action centric uh, sequences and yeah I I just gotta be honest here I really had a lot of fun with this film I had a blast with it it was just a big crazy over-the-top monster basher for the ages for me uh, it's the kind of film that begs to be seen on the biggest screen possible. And I know for a lot of people, it's a total whiplash when they're comparing it to something like Godzilla minus one. But to those people, I, I, I want to mention the fact that the director and the writer of Godzilla minus one saw this film and he had fun with it. He thought, it was an enjoyable movie. He thought it was entertaining. Like, I'm actually going to quote him here. I'm going to look up uh, 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 his quote here real quick. Because um, I think it's a good way to kind of sum up the film. To be perfectly honest. It is uh, the, the words of the writer and director of Godzilla Minus One. Because there's a lot of people saying, oh, well, after Godzilla Minus One, we get this dumb, over-the-top, stupid Godzilla Kong movie. Like, why? Why can't it be more like Godzilla Minus One? And, and I'm like, well, th the guy who did Godzilla Minus One, uh, Takashi Yamazaki, yeah, he saw it. He said, I was able to watch the big movie early. It is super fun and gorgeous. Be sure to watch it on the big screen. And yeah, I agree with him. It's super fun. It is. It's got flaws. It's got some plot holes. It's not perfect, but it's fun. Uh, and I think there's a place for Godzilla Minus One and its serious drama. And there's also an equal place for Godzilla X Kong The New Empire and its over-the-top popcorn style entertainment i think there's an equal place for both when it comes to these kaiju films i don't and i'm happy for that i don't think we need to have just godzilla films uh, or films featuring godzilla that are only like godzilla minus one because in all honesty if that was the case godzilla minus one would be less special and less unique and I like that there's varying different types of Godzilla films. There's different flavors of Godzilla movies. But yeah, uh, if you like the trailer, if you're a fan of these kind of big, loud, bombastic, over-the-top uh, blockbuster kaiju movies, these MonsterVerse films, you've probably already seen this film probably seen it more than once but if you were are a fan of those films and you haven't seen this one yet i highly recommend it i really do i think it's a blast but anyway that's my uh review of godzilla x calling the new empire and until next time i'll see you later see ya